Hey everyone, Josh here from Neighborhood Car Reviews and I'm inside this 2020 Lincoln Aviator. This is the Reserve Aviator and I'm at Tom Roush Lincoln in Fishers, Indiana. So a huge thanks and shout out to them for letting me come out and film this. Currently this vehicle resides in their showroom. It is a sold unit so it is inside. So some of my filming angles are going to be a little bit different than normal. Um, just due to the constraints of the size of the area that I'm in. But it's nice and open, and it's a nice little example of uh, the Aviator. So in this first video of mine of the 2020 Aviator, come on and join us. We're just going to do a walk-around review of it. We're not going to test drive it, start it up, or anything like that. Um, but it'll give you a good, view, good idea of uh, what all these vehicles have to offer. The all-new Lincoln Aviator is finally replacing the Ford Flex-based Lincoln MKT and is based on the new rear-wheel drive Explorer platform as the previous 2003 to 2005 Aviator was. While the previous Aviators were built in the, the St. Louis Assembly Plant in Hazelwood, Missouri, that plant was idled in 2006 during Ford's Way Forward program and ultimately demolished in 2009. Now, Aviators and Explorers are built at the Chicago Assembly Plant in Chicago, Illinois, which is Ford's oldest continually ran production plant. This Aviator is the mid-level reserve trim and is shown in the stunning pristine white metallic tri-coat pearl paint, which is a $695 option. Inside, you are greeted with a very Navigator-esque interior in sandstone with premium perforated leather. This Aviator is equipped with almost $18,000 in options, all of which I will list in the description box below, or you can go ahead and take a look at the window sticker right now. While aviators are standard with rear-wheel drive, for $2,510 you can opt for the all-wheel drive package, which this reserve features. It is a full-time automatic all-wheel drive system, and it features selectable drive modes. All the different drive modes are shown here in the crystal clear, high definition LCD instrument cluster. I actually love these animations that Lincoln are putting in this. And of course, power comes from Ford's 3 liter twin turbocharged EcoBoost V6 engine. It is a dual overhead cam. Features a 9 to 5 compression ratio with high pressure direct injection. It creates 400 horsepower at 5,500 RPM. 415 pound-feet of torque at 3,000 RPM. Its curb weight is 4,897 pounds with a gross vehicle weight rating of 6,500 pounds. It can tow a maximum capacity of 6,700 pounds. The Aviator features a 20.2 US gallon fuel capacity and consumes 5 gallons per 100 miles driven with an estimated total driving range of 405 miles. EPA fuel economy ratings are 17 miles per gallon city, 24 miles per gallon highway, and 20 miles per gallon combined. The transmission on this vehicle is Ford's 10-speed 10 10R80E 10 Select Shift Automatic Transmission with the piano key selectors, as well as shift pedals on the steering column. And the Aviator sits on a 119.1-inch wheelbase with an overall length of 199.3 inches. Exterior and interior are highlighted by all LED illumination. Alright, take a look around the rear of the Aviator. It looks very nice and very elegant. Almost sob-like with the way the taillights are designed. It is highlighted by a large rear spoiler that hides the rear wiper, something I wish the Navigator did. You've also got a single red LED strip that runs across the entire length and width. Tail lamps do feature the amber turn indicators. You've also got red driving lights. The quad exhausts are interesting in that the openings are actually cut from the bottom. And while I couldn't get a good profile view inside this room, just walking along the Aviator, it's a very nice, almost smaller version of the Navigator, although I like the styling of the Aviator a lot better. And taking a look around the front, being inside gives a good view of the exterior illumination. You do have dual adaptive dynamic LED headlamps and projector housings. Down below, you have LED turn indicator strips. You can also see the LED driving light. 
LED fog lamps below, and of course I love the uh, illuminated Lincoln Star logo. All right, of course this vehicle does feature smart key access. You've also got the uh, phone. You can use your phone as a key as well. Continental style door pulls with buttons on the back sides. Overall, the interior of the Aviator is absolutely impressive. Looks like a baby Navigator, which of course the older Aviators were the exact same way. It does have a style all of its own, but it does feature Lincoln's amazing perfect position seats, the Vista roof, panorama sunroof, and of course inside the Aviator we're going to be seeing some new switch gear that Ford is bringing out. Nothing really groundbreaking, but it is all new switch gear. Nicely styled door panels. You do have piano black finish. The Revel uh, sound system. And of course you have power heated power folding dimmable mirrors with LED turn repeaters. Power windows and power door locks. You got your switch for your electric door pull. And you have a backup manual door pull as well. Illuminate Lincoln sill plate. And on the dashboard, you do have your rear liftgate release button. You have your fog lamp button, Ford's new headlamp switch, and instrument panel dimming. Leather wrap, tilt and telescoping steering wheel. It is a power tilt and telescoping unit. Nice thick rim steering wheel. Does feature shift paddles. All right, take a look at the perfect position seats. They are no different than what you would find in the Continental or the Navigator. They are just as comfortable and just as adjustable. Many of the adjustments are made on the door controls. However, you do have some that are inside the infotainment system. All right, now we're going to pan through the interior and show more details. As it is inside, we could not start it, so we're just running off of the battery right now. I do love this two-tone leather wrap steering wheel with a stitched airbag cover. You do feature these um, toggle switches that actually can move up and down and you can also press them. And your cruise buttons are actually hidden until you press the cruise uh, button on the steering wheel. Your hands-free communication button oddly in the left hand portion of the steering wheel. Alright, this video does feature the LCD cluster that is commonplace on Lincoln's now. The Ford Explorer is also using the same style of LCD uh, cluster as well. This is just a quick view of some of the menus that are inside the, uh, the computer system itself. Pretty similar to most Lincoln's now. I do like how it has the uh, off-road data though for the pitch and roll. And of course this vehicle is equipped with a heads-up display. It does have the Revel audio system, so you have your center point speaker here. And seemingly uh, fitting with automotive styling today, you do have a floating tablet style display screen. Push button start. The nice thing about the screen though is it does feature bright, crisp, and clear graphics. Great response. Of course it is Ford Sync, so it is uh, Bluetooth as well as Apple CarPlay and Google Android Auto. Various seat controls for your various lumbar supports. And of course you have your multiple massage systems as well. Placing the vehicle in reverse if it were turned on would display the reverse camera but we'll just go ahead and press the camera button. As you can see you have front and rear facing cameras. You've also got a 360 surround view camera. Toggle your park sense off and on. Alright, moving down as you can see here, the piano key transmission controls. You've also got your climate controls down here. Very nice, crisp, almost liquid ink style temperature readouts. Controls for heated and ventilated seats. Fan speed and all that kind of stuff. Really nice aluminum diamond cut finished roll tops in the center console. 
You do have very large cup holders, a wireless charging mat and some USB ports, your drive mode selector and electric parking brake. Nice wide padded armrest covered in leather. Inside the storage is illuminated. Overall, the interior of the new Aviator is quite the sanctuary. It is a very quiet and refined place to be, very comfortable. Overhead, you do have an autom or Homelink Universal Garage Door Opener. LED overhead reading lights. They are touch sensitive. And of course, you have your panorama sunroof controls and shade controls. Sunglasses holder or taco holder if you so choose. Frameless automatic dimming mirror. Of course, the sun visors do feature illuminated vanity mirrors, and the sun visors do swing out and slide out on extensions. And overhead, you have dampened overhead assist handles. Alright, naturally, this vehicle does have three rows of seats, so when we look at the rear, we're going to take a look at the third row first. Gaining entry to the third row is very easy. It's a one-touch operation, pressing the button on the top of the seat. And of course, typical of the aviators of even the 2003 to 2005, third row seats two. 50-50 power folding bench seat with adjustable head restraints. You've also got cup holders, air vents, and power points. And now let's take a look at the second row. No bench seat is offered. You can only have the dual captain chairs as shown here. There is a full center console and adjustable armrests. The door panels do feature the same styling as the front doors. Piano black trim, satin aluminum trim, leather stitched. You also have the pull-up sun, sun shades for the windows, which is a nice touch. Overall, the rear seats are very nice and very spacious. They are fully adjustable for fore and aft, as well as seat back recline. High adjustable head restraints and adjustable armrest as well. These seats are also heated and ventilated. Another nice touch is this full center console with dual cup holders, storage bin. You have your overhead shade control for the panorama sunroof and a nice amount of storage. And the revised rear center console is an, a really neat system here. You do have a LCD touchscreen display where you can control your heated and ventilated seats. You also have uh, your climate controls here. Your audio controls for the rear seat, as well as your screen settings. And I love the calm screen. And of course, you have seat back map pockets as well.
Alrighty, now let's take a look at the luggage area. Typical of smaller third row SUVs, the luggage area isn't very big, but it's not very small either. It's actually a very smartly designed area with a flat load floor. There is little to no wheelhouse intrusion. Underneath this mat, you do have additional uh, covered storage. Of course, you have LED illumination, your power folding seat controls, 12 volt power point, and some tie down hooks. Luggage capacity behind the third row seats is actually 18.3 cubic feet. Pretty impressive if you ask me. You have a grocery bag hook here. Folding the seats is easy. First you need to release the head restraints. And then you can either press the L1 or L2. But we'll just go ahead and press both and it'll fold both seats. This is actually real time. They actually fold pretty quickly. Luggage capacity behind the second row seat as shown here is 41.8 cubic feet. And if we were to fold the second row seat, your total luggage capacity is 77.7 .7 cubic feet. All right, pressing the button on the trim panel, you can close your lift gate. And this does conclude our in-depth look at the new Lincoln Aviator. If you like this video and would like to see more like it, comment down below. Also, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe. And check out our Facebook page at facebook.com slash neighborhood car reviews. And of course, as always, thanks for watching.